What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing a beer from the Roundabout Brewery, and they are out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and this is their Heine's Good Cheer, the 2021 release. So they're calling this one a barrel-age blended old ale. It comes in at 10.1% alcohol by volume. No IBUs listed in time of review. This bottle is just over two months old. I'm going to give a huge thanks, shout out once again to a good friend of mine and a viewer of the channel, Dan, for hooking me up with this one. So big thanks to him. In the description box, I'll post a link to the beer mailboxing video I did that contains all the goodies he hooked me up with. And the last two beers I have from that beer mail are actually blended beers. This one and then a beer from, uh, was it Cinderlands? It was their uh, Daos, the uh, blend one, and it was a barrel, a blended barrel-aged uh, Imperial Stout. So this is a barrel-aged blended Old Ale. The uh, barrels they're using for this one are Templeton, Rye, and Willet, but they did not specify the actual barrels themselves, but it doesn't really matter. Why? Because I feel like this is going to be delicious. We'll see. So not much more uh, information on here uh, outside of what I already said. I got that from their Instagram and on tapped. It was you know, not a lot of information. So I am super, super excited to get in this one. I love, so I love Old Ales. I love Barley Wines. I don't drink enough of them. Or I shouldn't say I drink. I don't review enough of them. But uh, I'm hoping this is delicious. It's only two months old. Um, or just over two months old. So maybe a little time would be a little bit better on this one. But I couldn't resist. I had to crack it open. So it's been in my uh, my darker beer fridge where I keep it about 52. So uh, hoping that this is delicious. We'll see. Anyway, let's give it a pour here. Oh, so that's pouring out like straight up caramel. I don't anticipate a big head. I'm going to try to pour aggressive right here to generate one, but we'll see. We're just going to go like that. I'm not going to pour the entire thing in. I'm not going to even taste that because I always do that and I cheat and I don't like it. So, okay. So yeah, that's, so that looks, um, to shout out a good friend of mine and fellow beer tour, Matt over at Massive Beer Reviews. You know, he likes to say, like, this looks like doo-doo water, right? Like, it does to some degree. And that's kind of how you can tell you had a, a good old ale or barley wine with all the goodies. And it's like, you can't see through it. It's opaque. It looks terrible. It has this, like, brownish, reddish tinge. Um, opaque. There's about a, maybe three quarters of a head of finger. Um, three, three quarters of a finger of head. <laughs> Jesus. And um, it has this, like, nice tan, almost khaki color. Um, there is alcohol legs dare I say, sheets on the side of the glass, you can tell. It looks, if you had me an old ale, I kind of want it to look like this, honestly. It has that, like, just, like, straight on caramel, almost, uh, like, burnt toffee kind of look to it. Anyone's good nose. <sighs> Fuck my life. Oh, my God. <sighs> I need probably more than a minute. Probably not more than five, but somewhere between like one to five minutes alone, no talking, silence. Let me sniff this. Jesus Christ. Like, I, can't, I can't. This is ASMR beer reviews. What are we doing? I don't know. I'm smelling an amazing beer. That's what I'm doing. Getting any tinkles down there? I don't know. Um... This aroma is fucking phenomenal. This is, this is it. Like for an old ale or a barley wine, like an English barley wine, this is it. Caramel, check. Toffee, check. Shout out to Matt again. Werther's Original, Sugar Daddies, Raisin Nets. Anything that has, encompasses uh, Heath Bar, Score Bar. You can just start naming fucking different uh, candy bars, chocolate bars, and candies in general. It has that sweeter burnt sugar note so caramel toffee things of that nature butter a little butterscotch it's just but it's fucking punching me in the face with that there's a nice vanilla soft barrel presence like a like a peppery bourbon but this is all about that base old ale right now like the barrel presence vanilla bit of oak tannin peppery bourbon but that's like underneath all of those uh burnt sugars now I'm getting dark fruit more so, like that raisin, a little bit of plum, dark cherry. Slight cola vibe too. And uh, it's funny because I don't know when you're going to see this review, but in March of uh, 2022, I'm going to review some Bourbon County and I plan on doing the cola variant. And that's been a polarizing beer for a lot of people where, you know, I feel like if you like cola, you'll probably enjoy that one. If you don't, you won't. I love cola. You know, I, I like Coca-Cola mostly. Uh, Pepsi and RC are fine. Off off brands, sure. But um 
this is giving me slight cola vibes, but it's again more about. I'm just, I just thought I'd mention that because it's slight cola attention. You know, around Christmas time, people make those like rum butter balls. I'm kind of getting that a little bit. Here's the thing: I'm talking about all the malt character in this one and how you know sweet and you know sugar daddies and Werther's original and raisinets and blah blah blah. But it doesn't smell too sweet. It has that like. It has that like. I like to say sophisticated sweetness, like when you get like something like a like a creme brulee as a dessert or like a tiramisu or something where like you're getting into it, you know it's going to be sweet, rich, and decadent, but it's not like eating a candy bar uh, or eating just like something that is very high in sugar and that's all you're getting. Um, that's one reason why I like like Score and Heath bars is I feel that toffee presence is, even though it's chocolate, it, it's a little bit more sophisticated of a chocolate bar, dare I say. I don't know. This is fucking amazing. Like, there's a little bit of, like, a dirty earthiness, too, like a hop character. But this is fucking... This is a 5 out of 5. Like, smell alone. I just want to get into it. Cheers, everybody. Dan, I cannot thank you enough for this. Because even if the taste is a letdown, which, like, 85% of the time it is, the nose made up for it. Regardless. Cheers. That's really fucking delicious. The nose is better. The nose is better. But the taste isn't far behind. Mm. For 10.1% too, like first sip. A little bit of warming in the chest, but nothing on the palate. Alright, so. The reason why it's not as good as the. Still not good, as good as the nose, but like. That second sip, that finish, where there's original score bar, Heath bar, it's like just all the good burnt sugars with a little bit of like chocolate added in. But the reason why this will not get a five out of five, I'm just saying that from the get go, is that nose is a five out of five. The body and mouth feel slightly disappointing for me, for what I was hoping for. The body, this is like higher side of medium, lower side of full, 10.1%. I want to see that more firmly in like the low to mid full if not straight on full and that's that's the I, i'd probably say the um the slight disappointment from this one is the body isn't as robust as i'd like it to be the mouthfeel is spectacular and kind of what i want in the realm of this it lets you know it's carbonated but it still has such a soft smoothness to it that you do get the carbonation but it finishes like the second half of the palate like when you take a sip i'm gonna take a small sip here all right there's carbonation First half of the palate, tip of the tongue. As it goes through the palate and it finishes, it smooths right out and all that carbonation is kind of left behind. Um, the taste, it's so much burnt sugar goodness that it's kind of hard to kind of put into words. Tons of caramel toffee. There's a little bit of butterscotch. That hits me right at the forefront. Right after that, raisin plum dates like darker fruit but those are like it's like you took caramel or toffee and like more caramel than anything those are it's like those fruits and care and, and like dipped in caramel so not quite like a raisinette where it's like you know raisinette is a, a chocolate covered uh raisin it's more like a caramel covered raisin there is a little bit of underlying like baker's chocolate it's not really sweet chocolate that's left to the caramel and toffee side of things halfway through the palate i do get the barrel presence starts sneaking in. Peppery, like barrel, peppery bourbon whiskey. There's an oak tannin kind of combination that carries on to the end of the palate. But it, I've had this happen recently in a lot of beers where the front of the palate is kind of hits. You go through the rest of the palate, other things are happening. Then in the back of the palate, the front half hits again. And that's kind of what's happening here. On the back of the palate, I'm left with like a sweeter chocolate, like Heath and like score bar type of, type of finish. Really nice. I say a Werther's original in the nose and then a little bit in the taste because it has just that, like if you had a Werther's original in your mouth right now, you just keep on getting the caramel, burnt sugar kind of goodness, and that's kind of what this is. Um, it's really sweet up front, but that sweetness kind of gradually declines and devolves into this like really nice, moderately um, bitter and semi-dry oak tannin kind of dryness on the back of the palate. I think one really big pro to this one is despite it being 12 or 10.1%, like on the palate, the listen, 
as somebody who loves old ales and barley wines and especially English barley wines, me drinking this, if I if somebody gave me this as a whodunit beer review, a mystery beer, I would at the very least say this is 10%. Why? Because I know these flavors, I know this taste, and I know it's not going to be something that's in a 5% beer. But what I can say about this is all that multi goodness along with that barrel presence, there is no hint of astringent booze on the palate. It's not, dare I say, hot. Some people like to say it's not boozy on the palate. It's just, it's in, in the chest you get a nice warming but there's nothing on the palate that's like Detroit. Like sometimes you get a boozy beer and it's just like on the finish, it's just like flames, right? Like you're just like, oh man, not this beer. This is a sipper. As somebody who can't, you know, drink high ABV beers regularly, this is a beer that I'll drink. The, I'm going to drink this over the course of two days. I'm going to cap probably the rest of it and come back tomorrow and drink the second half of it. And... The reason for that is it's 10.1%. This is in a you know 16.9 ounce bottle, so 500 milliliter. I can't be drinking 16.9 ounces of this in a single night anymore, um, especially since I want to drink it quite quite quickly because it's so delicious. But I will say this: it's it's fucking it's it's this is a great this is borderline world class for what they're going for. At least the stuff I have tasted. I still say the nose was better, and if the nose carried over and everything, like the body and the mouthfeel and everything, well, the mouthfeel is great, but if the body would have carried over and it was a little bit more intense on the palate, I think this is a five out of five, but it doesn't quite get there. But it's still, this is awesome. I, not much more to say about this. Um, it's really fucking delicious. I'll just be honest with you, I've never heard about Roundabout until uh, Dan sent me this beer. I had no idea. Like, I've, you know... Pittsburgh Brewery, uh, Pittsburgh Breweries on my radar, Hitchhiker, Dancing Gnome, um, Brew Gentleman. Now Old Thunder after him sending me some stuff. A couple other places. Roundabout was not on that list. They totally are entrenched on that list after this beer. Uh, this is fucking just divine, amazing, delicious, exquisite beer. So, rating on Heine's Good Cheer, the 2021 release from... Roundabout, that's a high 4.75 out of 5. I'm a 4.8 out of 5. I can't give it much lower. I can't give it much higher. Um, I think the main detractor not getting a 5 out of 5 is the body and then maybe the slight intensity of flavors. Uh, but at the end of the day, like the look of it, the nose, just everything screams world-class beer, and this is pretty much it. Price point availability, this is where I have no idea. Uh, price point on this one, I would hope that a beer like this would be no more than 20 bucks for the bottle, but a 4.8, like knowing what I'm drinking here, they released this and it was $25 for a single bottle. I'd probably buy that, um, knowing how good it is. Like, let's say they released the 2022 version next year or variant or whatever release vintage. I would buy it if it's $25 for a pack. If this is like in the 14 to 16 to $18 range, like I would buy multiple bottles of it. It's that damn good. And if you appreciate English barley wines and old ales, then I don't understand how you wouldn't like this. Um, and availability, I have no idea. If, so, Dan, if you watch this or anybody in the Pittsburgh... Here's a, here's a crazy thing, too. I don't care how fucking long this review. You should know by now if you come to the Beer Patrol. I don't care if the beer review is 7 minutes long or 18 minutes long. Like It doesn't matter. Whatever. I just talk about the beer. They happen to be longer reviews, so be it. Um, I've had a lot of people with the old Thunder reviews, and then I posted a Hitchhiker review and a couple others. It's like... They watch, there's a lot of Pittsburgh area people that watch my videos and they chime in and more so than any other area, them and the, the folks in Chicago, a lot of people comment on the videos and I appreciate you guys. Um, so if anybody in the, in the uh, Pittsburgh area, whether it's Dan or others, let me know about Roundabout. What else should I try from Roundabout? Is there anything else that I could get my hands on that you think is delicious? Um, I'm really interested in now the Cinderland beer because I haven't heard about them before. Now that's a barrel aged blended Imperial Stout. So, like, I'm all in on this beer. I'm all in on this brewery. Like, I want to try more from them. So, um, not much more to say about it. If you've had this one before or any other prior vintage, let me know. Uh, kudos to Roundabout for um, just fucking nailing this beer. This is this is delicious. So. Not much more to say about it. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Thanks again to Dan for the beer. And uh, sorry for the longer review, but that's what you get here on the Beer Patrol. A lot of rambling nonsense talking about Shocker Daddy and Heath Bars, the score bars, whatever. They're fucking delicious. This beer's delicious. Until the next one. Cheers.